In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to deinterlace your video, or perhaps more accurately put, to go from an interlaced video at 29.97 frames per second to a progressive video at 59.94 frames per second, and I'm also going to show you how to resize it. Now, there are, as I mentioned, three ways I'm going to talk about. There is Premiere Pro, there is Hybrid, and there is Topaz Video AI, which I throw in at the end, uh, even though that probably needs its own video. So for this test, we will be using some mini DV footage that we transferred over from our mini DV uh, camcorder using WinDV. I'm just gonna say a quick word about interlaced footage. Now, when you play this back on an old CRT television, it looks fine because the CRT televisions are um, able to handle that kind of stuff and your eyes don't notice that not all the information is there in any one frame. But when you transfer it over to a computer, you do get these jaggies or whatever they're called, these little lines that you can notice, particularly in a high movement uh, situation. And what you see here is the camera was panning over this table pretty fast and you can see all those lines. Now here is a frame or a screenshot of what it looks like when the software that we're gonna be talking about today, when the software has dealt with these interlaced frames. But we'll get to all that. Now, I should also point out something really important is that you may not really have noticed these interlaced lines. If ever you were looking at old video footage or you've captured video footage and you opened it up in VLC or Media Player Classic, it's possible that you haven't noticed that. And the reason is, is that these uh, software have built in deinterlacing tools. They interlace stuff on the fly, and you can see where the setting is in um, in VLC. But if you look over on the top right of the screen, you can see the uh, the banister there, the railing has got those lines. So it's doing a pretty good job, this software on the fly, but you can see it's not perfect. And so the goal of this video and the goal of deinterlacing is to um, kind of hard code the deinterlacing so that on any other device, that you watch this video, we want to make sure that it always looks good. It always looks progressive, that you don't see any of these uh, lines. Now, I should say that there's a big assumption in what I'm saying. And the assumption is, is that it's better to do this conversion using, you know, the software that's available today in 2024. It's better to do this conversion than simply to let the devices downstream deal with it. And by that, I mean, you could upload a file, an, in, an interlaced file to YouTube. If YouTube is able to convert it in a way that you don't see those lines and it does a pretty good job, maybe that's the best way to proceed. In the discussions I've read from, you know, experts in this area, most seem to believe that most of the time it's a better idea to do the conversion that we're going to do today in this video. Okay, sorry for that long introduction, a lot of blah, blah. I know you want to get to the... Um, comparison videos, and you know you can skip ahead if you want to, but I wanna show you the method that I used. So if you notice something that I'm doing wrong, please do leave a comment. What we're trying to do, just to take a step back, what we're trying to do with all these interlaced videos is, is really three things. The first thing is we wanna go from an interlaced video to a progressive video so that all of the fields appear at the same time in every frame. The second thing we're doing, and this is connected to it, but it's not exactly the same, is we want to go from 29.97 frames per second to 59.94 frames per second. And then the third thing we want to do, and this isn't really connected to the whole interlaced progressive thing, it's just something that we can do, and I'm throwing it into this video, is we want to scale the video or resize the video. There's different words you see in different software. We basically, we want to make it a little bit bigger so that it in theory, looks better on YouTube. Okay, big picture stuff now is that in Adobe Premiere, the way that you apply these changes, or at least the first two changes, is to create a sequence with the correct settings. And when you create a sequence with the correct settings and then you dump your, uh, your AVI interlaced file in there, it will, when you export it, it will apply all those things to that video file. It'll make it progressive, change the frame rate, all that stuff. So let me show you what the screen looks like. You're gonna to go to new sequence. You're gonna pick an HD 1080p uh, timeline and go into the settings and make sure that they look like this. The time base or frame rate is 59.94 uh, frames per second. Then we're gonna make sure that the uh, frame size is 1440 by 1080, right? That's gonna give us the space we need. 
Uh, and then finally, the last thing we want to make sure of is that the fields, the fields is set to no fields or progressive scan, because we don't want this to be an interlaced uh, final output. So that's it. We've created the box. We've created the sequence. And now we're going to dump our video file into that box or into that sequence. And that's going to take care of the first two of those issues, the interlaced to progressive stuff and the frame rate. So we're going to keep the existing settings. And the next thing we have to do is the third part, which was scaling. So we'll go to the effects uh, menu option or tab. We'll go over to scale and we'll increase this to, at first I tried 225, but I think we have to increase that just a little bit more because we have some black bars at the top. So let's bring it up to 230. And really that's it. That's all you have to do at this point. But I just want to show you something in the, um, in the context menu. If you right click over the video file and you get this context menu, you're going to see something that is called field options. And if you look under field options, there is something that says always deinterlace. Now this is a video about deinterlacing, so maybe that's what you're supposed to click, but do not click that. Don't click that. The next thing I want to show you in the context menu is an option called time interpolation. Time interpolation has to do with when you're changing from one frame rate to another. Now we are doing that because our AVI file was only 29.97 frames per second. We're moving up to 59.94 frames per second. So Adobe needs to know or wants to know from us, how do we want to handle it? Which of these, I don't know, algorithms, options, I'm not sure what they're called, do we want to use? Do we want to use frame sampling, frame blending, optical flow? Now there's much better videos on the internet you can watch that explain the difference between the two, but here just on the screen, if you're curious, is something about them. Anyway, for the purpose of this test, what I'm doing is I'm outputting the uh, AVI file. I'm outputting it as three different MOV files. And I'm going to use each of those a different time interpolation methods just to see if there's any difference, if it's noticeable in the video footage that I'm using. On the export screen here, I'll just to go over a few things, we're going to use uh, ProRes 422. We have our frame size 1440 by 1080. We have our frame rate set to 59.94. So that's all fine because that had to do with the sequence settings that we created at the beginning. Of course, it's a progressive uh, file. And you notice at the bottom, we see time interpolation again. So I, I'm not, I think what you have to do is you have to set frame sampling in that context menu, and then you have to choose frame sampling here. It doesn't sort of carry over. I think you have to do it both ways. Uh, so anyways, that's what I did. And I repeated the process for the other two time interpolation uh, methods. Let's now talk about method two, the hybrid QTGMC and resizer. So Hybrid is a free program. It's actually a graphic user interface for a lot of other uh, sort of open source tools. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, let's again remind you that we're trying to do three things. We're trying to go interlace to progressive. We're going to change the frame rate and we're going to scale the, uh, the video or resize the video. In Hybrid, in the Crop Resize tab, you see a lot of different methods here on the right side for the resize option. So this has to do with the third thing we're trying to do. Okay, we're going to start with the third thing. Which one of these do you use? Uh, the ones that we're going to be looking at today are the ones you see on the screen. Bilinear is considered to be the least sharp. So when you resize the video and it gets bigger, it can be a little bit blurry at the end because you're resizing it without it doing any kind of math to try to make things look sharper, right? Or you can make it very, very sharp using something like Sync. Bicubic, and in fact, from what I understand, that's actually the one that Premiere uses when Premiere uh, scales up the video um, as we did before. We went to 230 uh, uh, size. Okay, so uh, here's the choices. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to select a bunch of these. We'll compare them against each other. We'll get to that uh, shortly. All right, there's something I have to show you here. I'm sorry I have to do this. Uh, this is a, a, a little image that you've seen on the internet. Maybe um, this shows you the visual representation of what these resizers do sort of the math that they do in the background to add detail, call it, or sharpness to a video that is um, that has been resized. You could pause the video and look at this, but all this to say is it goes from least sharp on the top left to most sharp on the bottom right. I think this, uh, this graphics may be a little bit easier to understand. There's less choices and just you know, take my word that this is the order that they that they go in. Okay, so you can see in the crop resize, we're gonna upscale to 1440 by 1080. Um, and we've picked uh, Langsos in this example as our scaler. But go in the filtering tab, in the uh, deinterlace uh, tab, and I just want to point out a couple of things here. Uh, we're using, at the top right, we're using VaporSynth. We're using QTGMC as our deinterlacer. 
and we're making sure that bottom field first is selected because we're uh, dealing with a mini DV file. In the main part of the, um, in the middle of the screen here, you see the QTGMC settings. Now, the ones that you see on the screen um, are ones that I borrowed from a post that I saw on a video help forum. And basically what the guy there was trying to do, as he explains here, is he was trying to, he, he was trying to uh, deinterlace the video without introducing any filtering that would make it look, that would sort of enhance it with, no, with denoising um, um, features. This is the script that he used, or this is the, yeah, I guess the script that he used. Uh, in hybrid, you can't actually manipulate the script in the same way. You have to sort of use whatever the graphic user interface gives you. So I was able to mimic some, but not all of what this guy did. And those are the settings that you see on the screen. Now, the other thing to show you, very important, the BOB Bob is checked there and around the top left of the uh, QTGMC section. What that does, what the Bob um, option does, is it, it upscales your video from uh, 2997 to 5994. So just like in, in Adobe Premiere, we made that adjustment. Well, we're making the adjustment here. And so now we've actually dealt with all three of those things. We have uh, done the uh, uh, interlace to progressive, we have changed the frame rate, and we have also uh, chosen an upscale tool. Okay, let's just look quickly in the VaporSynth tab. The VaporSynth tab and all the sub-tabs, this is where you would do stuff like denoise, degrain, dehalo, and so on. We're not going to touch any of that for this video. The only thing we are going to look at is the frame tab. And in the frame tab, we're going to go to the resize sub-tab. Now, what you see here is something called resizer, and it's checked. And there's something called NNEDI3 listed here. And you may be asking yourself, as I did when I first stumbled across this, what is the difference between the resizer that we saw before and the resizer that is here? The short answer is they are kind of equivalent, but I don't think they're entirely equivalent. But for practical purposes, they do the same thing. And I can also tell you is that when you check the box here, the resizer box here, it overrides the resizing thing that you picked on the other screen. So they're not in the same place, uh, but they are kind of equivalent. And anyway, I'm going to be using NNEDI3 as one of the resizers that I show you in the comparison video later on. Now, just a side note here about NNEDI3. Here's something that Solur, he's the author of the hybrid uh, graphic user interface software that we're using here. Uh, he said in a forum post that he prefers to use it uh, when he's upscaling by more than 50%. Uh, and he wants the resizer to just upscale with no additional filtering. Anyway, all that to say, he uses it. He knows way more than me about this. And so I sort of trust his, um, his opinion on this. But we are going to test it against other ones to see what the difference is. Okay, so we're ready to export this video. And one thing you'll notice in uh, hybrid is that these exports take way, way, way longer than the one in Premiere. And I'm speeding up the video here just to, uh, to get to the end of it. It kind of leads me to the conclusion that maybe hybrid is doing something and QTGMC and all that stuff. Maybe it's doing something that's a little bit more interesting or a little bit better than Premiere. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to look at the results, don't, you know, but it just, it strikes me as interesting that it takes a lot longer for it to do the thing that it's trying to do than in Premiere. All right, let's start our comparison. Okay, the first comparison is we have the hybrid exported video on the left, Premiere on the right. Now, one thing that I, I've noticed is that on the right, if you look at the slats in the table on the right, they don't look as dark, if I can put it that way, as on the left. And if you look at the chair, I'm now zooming in now to my um, to my timeline in Premiere. Uh, look as we pan to the left, look how on the right side, Premiere is having some trouble with the top of that chair. It's doing that jumping around thing. I think that has a name. Somebody will say in the comments, but it's it's not uh, handling that too well, whereas the QTGMC doesn't seem to have that problem, right? And like, as it goes across, the Premiere just looks more jumpy, right? It just, there's, I don't know what the right word is, but anyway, let's zoom in a little bit here. The camera, it's actually the camera that's zooming in, not the, uh, not the software. 
and you see on the right side, well, first of all, it looks, it, to me, it looks sh sharper on the left, like the black line looks a bit um, more black, and then it, it's not as jumpy as on the right. Okay, so I think that QTGMC wins that round, and now let's have a look at uh, Premiere. Let's just get this out of the way. Uh, we're going to compare the fl frame blending and frame sampling in Premiere to see if there's any difference. And truthfully, I've looked at this on my computer and I don't really see any difference. I, I think it's probably because we're not going uh, very fast in these pans. I think if we were going faster or maybe if the video was a higher resolution to begin with, I think that maybe that would make a difference. We'd notice a difference. But anyway, I couldn't see any difference between frame blending, frame sampling. And I'm going to run the same test now for optical flow and frame sampling. And I'll let it run for a second, but basically I don't see any difference. Okay, so what have we learned so far? Well, I think QTGMC is better at the interlaced progressive conversion than Premiere Pro. I mean, I think that's just clear. Uh, in Premiere Pro, for what it's worth, the three time interpolation methods look the same. At least they look the same with my footage. Maybe if you had different footage, they would make a difference. But anyway, since I'm not really going to be using Premiere Pro to do the deinterlacing, it's not sort of a moot point. Okay, now we're going to head into the uh, QTGMC uh, resizing. So on the left side, we see bicubic. On the right side, NNEDI3. So everything is the same about these. They're being deinterlaced in the same way. The only difference is the resizing. Only difference is the resizing. And I think what is clear from this video is that the right side, the NNEDI3, looks a little bit uh, sharper and less, um, I don't know, wiggly maybe, those lines. There's less dancing maybe than on the right, sorry, than on the left. as we uh, zoom in here to the barbecue handle. I mean, this, this looks pretty similar. I honestly don't see really a difference between these two. I noticed it more when it was on the table. Let's look at another comparison. Let's look at again, bicubic still on the left. This is the middle of the road one. And now we're gonna do sync on the right. Uh, sync is, I believe, one of the sharpest. So you should see a lot more sharpen uh, sharpened video on the right side. The question is, is it too sharp? So the table looks good, but look look what happens when you go over the barbecue uh, hood. I don't know if you noticed that, but the on the barbecue lid on the right side, that metal piece there, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's overly sharp and it just looks a little bit unnatural and it's doing some weird things. Okay, for this next test, we're going to combine or we're going to compare Sync and Lanxos. These are like cousins. I think one was a derivative of the other. These should be pretty close. We shouldn't see much difference between the two of them, but I was curious to see um, what they look like side by side. I think, I, I think Sync is a a little bit sharper. I was looking at the um, the wood panels in the back as it passed over it, looking at like the black lines between those wood panels. And I got the sense that sync was a little bit sharper than Lanxos, but pretty close. And uh, yeah, you, you look at the line, the black line on the left side there. It's, it's a bit, um, it's a bit darker on the, uh, on sync. Okay, now we're gonna do sync against bilinear. Bilinear is the least sharp of all the options. And we should see a big difference between these two. It should be softer on the right side and sharper on the left side. And I think it is. Let's look at it as it goes over the barbecue edge here. Let's look at that again. Look at the edge of the barbecue, the silver there. 
Chrome, yeah. It, it, it was, there was a lot more, I don't know, dancing or, or, or wiggling lights. Um, and then when Bilinear came over, it just sort of softened everything up. And you can see a big difference here on the left, on the right, between that black line on the, on the handlebar of the barbecue lid. Okay, so results so far. Uh, NNE DI3 and Bicubic, I think for me, are the best overall choices. Bicubic is the middle of the road one. NNDI3 is sharp, but not as sharp, I don't think, as Sync and Lanxos. So I would sort of go with that one, especially for footage that is not high resolution footage. If you were dealing with footage from your iPhone or something, yeah, maybe you choose one of those other ones. But for this type of footage, I don't think you should go past NNE DI3. And by cubic just might be the safest choice for most things. Okay, let's look at method number three. This is Topaz Video AI. This is a $300 software, so it's not for everybody. I have not purchased it yet. I'm using the trial version, so you're gonna see a watermark, but I did wanna compare how it handles interlaced footage to the other methods. Now, what I'll say off the bat is that in the discussion forums for Topaz, what users of Topaz sort of readily acknowledge is that the interlacing works better in hybrid than in Topaz. And sometimes what they do is they do the deinterlacing in hybrid, and then they bring it over here. And they use that as a progressive file within this interface, and they use different models and stuff. Anyway, here we go. We're doing um, 1920 by 1080. We're doing a frame rate that is um, 5994. And here are the results. So Topaz on the left, and we have NNEDI3 on the right. So I think it's sharper. The Topaz Video AI is sharper, but it just looks unusual and unnatural. Like it's really um, defining those lines, right? Um, it's also taking away, I think, the, uh, the dancing that you find on the right side. Right, so that's kind of good. But if we just look here in the Premiere timeline, look at the top of that chair, you can see it's adding definition to stuff. And that, that's something that it does really well. But then look at the grass in the background. The grass now has this sort of haze on it, sort of adding a texture to the grass. I think it's to sort of trick the brain into, into believing that it's sharper. Now we're comparing the uh, Topaz with Premiere. So Premiere, this was like the softest one, the most, hazy one, the most dancey one. And you can see a big difference in that table. I mean, look at that. It's really clear to me when you compare Topaz with Premiere, how much sharper Topaz is than Premiere. And look at the bar, like just right from this, from this uh, distance, you can see the bar on the right is just uh, not as sharp and it's dancing around a lot more than the one on the left. So what is our conclusion after all this? Well, I think when you're converting SD interlaced video to progressive, right, whether it's mini DV or um, from VHS tape or something, I think QT GMC and using the resizer by Cubic or NNE DI3, I think that's better than Premiere Pro. In fact, I, I, I mean, I'm being polite. It's, it is better than Premiere Pro. Um, as for Topaz Video AI, well, in 2024, uh, it makes the video look unnatural. I don't know how else to say it. It is, uh, I mean, I'm hoping it's gonna get better and it's gonna kick the butt of everything else. But for now, I would stick with hybrid. I would use the um, one of those uh, resizers I mentioned. That's it, hope you enjoyed the video. Here's some more, don't forget to subscribe.